beep, beep. What is up, guys? My name is Sam World, and I make music production and sound design videos for dance music here on YouTube to help you reach your goals. Now, every Thursday, I hold the feedback stream where a lot of you guys send me music in the dance music world. And whenever I get progressive tracks in nature, like Melodic House, Melodic Techno, Progressive House, the new one that Beatport says is Progressive House, not the old Nicky Romero stuff. Um, one of the things that I feel lacks a lot in the tracks is essentially making your synth sound interesting. So in today's video, we're going to discuss little cool tricks that you can do to make your synths sound more interesting on the little eight bar loop that I've made here, utilizing a bit of exploration, which is a new pack, hopefully coming out early October for you guys. If you're making again, progressive uh, kind of stuff in the dance music world. With that being said, guys, if you want to support the channel, you can find all of my sound design work at evilsounds.com. And let's get straight into this video. Okay, so first to kind of show you what sounds, I guess, robotic and lifeless, I have to give you an example. So here I have this little loop that I've made, uh, which is going to sound like this. And hopefully the thing that you realize sounds robotic and kind of boring and dull is going to be this ARP lead, which I've pretty much taken the delay and reverb and all, all the fun stuff I've added to it off. But from there, we're going to add it back on and talk about techniques that you can do. So this is how it sounds like. <music> So many people might have reasons on why this sounds robotic or boring. Some people might say it's the MIDI pattern, you know, that's what it is said. But if you pay attention to a lot of these kind of tracks, usually the ARPs stay the same and everything around the track changes. Um, but then from there, the thing itself still sounds horrible. Uh, in a sense, it just sounds like a fucking robot. Oh, my name is Sam World and it's my birthday. No emotion to it. So it's time to add that emotion. So let me give you guys a couple of tips. First off, the first place that you should start when seeking to add additive interest, I think that's a good term to use for this, these techniques, is to see if you can add any form of change over time. So when you have LFOs here, which stands for low frequency oscillator, these guys are modulators and they're gonna modulate the sound. And there's a couple of parameters here that a lot of people tend to turn on, like the retrig and the envelope mode on. But when you have this on off, the LFO will essentially work and just keep going and not restart but it will be in sync with ableton where you're at at a bar so for instance here what i can do is for some instance let's say that i want i don't know like this to pan then i can put lfo2 to our pan make sure it's in off mode set the rate that you want it at and then we get something that sounds like this <laughs> Now, here's the thing where I'm talking about, like, not to put the retrig on when you want to add this stuff so that it's more gradual. And also you can unsync it if you feel like it's too predictable. Uh, if I put the trig on, it's just getting activated and it's always starting from here. So we're always on the left side. OK, uh, so again, we want to make sure it's off and you're going to notice it always starts at the beginning of the bar. But now if I go to the middle of the bar. It's going to kind of sync with Ableton. So it's kind of like it is sync. It's not. But it's it's perfect to do cool stuff that maybe happens every now and then. This is one way you can execute. So obviously the pan is very kind of like, okay, cool. But we can also do it to our warp parameters inside of Serum. Again, if you don't have Serum and you're using another synth, this just means that you can apply modulations to things. Look for um, opportunities where you can do this, where it sounds kind of interesting. So we can do it maybe to the bend. <laughs> We'll start from here. Okay, and now if we take it off, you can see how there's a big change. Now, it's debatable, subjective if you think the change we added was great. And you might think it's, well, that sucks, and you're just overthinking it. And, and you could be right, okay? But again, the thing is just adding a little bit of unpredictable factor. As a listener, I'm hearing that square. I'm just going, to, I already know what the hell it's doing, man. Da, 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 da. From there, you don't have to use the LFO. One of the other things that is like, I guess, an art in itself that got lost in translation when we went from the analog world into the digital world is the damn mod wheel. Now, there's a lot more modulators out there, like, you know, pedals and stuff. But most people, I can say, are going to have a digital fake mod wheel that you can't really in this scenario, I have the module routed to four things, a filter cutoff, the reverb, the decay, the flange, okay? But the thing is, is that you can kind of get rid of all that and set it to parameters that you think would fit. Like you want the cutoff to open up. And one of the easiest things to do is obviously maybe every time before you're going to loop again, which is usually 
four bar mark or two bar mark in, in uh, dance music because it's very like, I guess, four, four is you can do something like where it swells up. So that's another really neat idea where we can have maybe the reverb come up on it. So we're going to do that, add it here. And of course, you can add other cool things like the flanger that I had, which is going to sound something like this. So you just route there. So we're going to start from the beginning and then execute it. And again, if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can move that thing up and do this. And it's a lot more fun than using the damn mouse. That's for sure. One more time. Okay, so that's additive interest. Just adding a little bit more to it, okay? And the module, you can route it to your to your wavetable position. So maybe from a square, you go to a saw. Again, it's all about being creative at this point. Um, but from there, from the mod, there's other, other really cool stuff that I feel, again, is lost. And there's some sound designers, not me included, but I do want to add it into my patches that I sell to you guys, is velocity and note modulation. So velocity has to deal with how hard you're pushing a key. So you, you might go like, boom, and just hit that, smack the shit out of it. So it's going to go all the way up here. Um, but if you smack it soft, it's going to be down here. So now you can add velocity changes. So that's one way to add dynamicness to your sound is you can put it on the level. That's the more obvious one. So now we can go into the ARP loop itself. We can hit B. And for some reason, we can do little quotes, things like just straight up like this on it. And let's see how that sounds like. I mean, it probably won't sound good, but you'll get the idea on how this adds additive interest. Okay, so obviously the volume's jumping up and down and all that. So that's one, and that's usually the traditional way velocity is used. The other way, and the more obvious one, we're gonna get rid of this, is to add it to our cutoff so we can maybe lower the cutoff down and then have this go up. It's a little random right now, but think of all the things you could do with that. I mean, for, for I don't know why the hell like Ableton's making me like hit twos and stuff, but from there, you know, we could kind of just go in. Again, maybe it's yeah, yeah, it's that. We're gonna go 116. So maybe we can start off really low, have a little spike up, start off really low, have another little spike up, start out really low, have a little spike up, and then show them who's show them who's who's the man, and then come back down. You know, you're in control. So now. Show them who's boss. Okay, so velocity, again, that's going to be one of the parameters most synths are going to have. And you just got to find out where it's at. So I use Serum. I'm a, I'm a Steve Duda fanboy. It's the hair. Um, <laughs> but that's one way to kind of go about it. So from there, we can add the velocity to obviously the reverb. <laughs> Show them who's boss. Okay, so you, you get the idea. Uh, so that's another way to kind of go about it. So now we can maybe um, remove all destinations. So now we're back to the boring ass. Um okay, so again, you see the difference instantly. Like, the big difference. Okay, um, from there, um, other cool stuff is the note. Okay, so again, this is just stuff inside of the synth. We're going to get off the synth in a bit. But the notes is another cool one so obviously the note is going to have to deal with how high you're playing on the notes so if you play a g there's a value for that if you play a higher g you just jump up there so with arps or leads you might have that now here's the thing you might not see a lot of change so one of the cool things which i want to put here i'm going to go start with a saw i'm going to add a wavetail position now this idea comes from my mode matrix which is over here it's not executed in the same way but it has a mode where if you have let's say the four voice mode on and then you have four oscillators, it can jump between them. So you can have a saw in one oscillator, a square in another, and a triangle in the other. And now you have this very dynamic full sound that's just changing wavetables constantly. We can mimic that by utilizing the notes. So what's what I mean? So we have a saw. Now from here, I don't want to change. But I know I'm jumping up. So maybe I'd do this, do that. Again, getting creative with it. Papa. Okay, so I like that, and I'm going to leave that, because from there, we're going to get out of the synth. But again, in this section, 
when it comes to your synth, use the mods. Use your mod reel. That's the, that's like something that got lost, and hopefully you guys bring it back. Just put that mod on stuff you think would sound cool, and then play around with it. Uh, that's one way to go about it, or use it to execute really nice sort of transitions, etc. From there, we do have the LFO, which again you can apply gradual change to a sound as you move. So for instance, if some reason you want to have this happening slowly, then you can add that and that creates variation. You can also execute an auto pan through there. Okay. And again, off mode, uh, from there, you no know, velocity and notes. And I think you get the idea. So we're going to leave this now like that and move, move along. Now the next thing we can do, and it all goes around in a circle because it's literally the same thing we did in Serum is utilize plugins in order to do this. So there's a lot of great plugins out there, but we'll stick to the Ableton ones for now. Uh, the first one, and this is a cool trick I learned from a student uh, that is actually being taught by me and and Amor. And Amor is a great progressive artist. Check him out. He also does one on ones, I believe. Um, but one of the things he taught the student, which was basic in my opinion, but it's not bad because it's just like, why didn't I think of that kind of vibe uh, is to utilize an auto filter. So we're going to use the filter. And then move the filter down a bit, but add a bit of LFO change here. So this is very similar to the serum thing we did, except it's being routed to the cutoff of the synth, but then have it at a very slow rate and just happening like so. So what's going to happen is the LFO is telling this guy to move very slow. Okay, I can't do it that slow. My mouse is too finicky, but you get the idea. So let's apply that. <laughs> You can also add like vibrato to it. So if I do this, uh, let's say. Hi. But it's lower, we're gonna have it. Okay, from there, another way to make synths more interesting is obviously reverb and echo. Now, the good thing is in some of the uh, plugins inside of Ableton, the stock ones, you do have really cool like opportunities. You have a modulation section in the echo. So for instance, I could do here, I don't want to link them, but I'll have one fourth, one eighth. I'm going to add reverb through here. Okay, so we have this new sound added, a new new source that we're creating with the ARP, obviously the. But the cool thing about Ableton is there's a modulation section, which again, it's just an LFO being routed to parameters inside of this. One of the things you can do is modulate the delay, which might sound a little off. This is a great way to kind of get like a very old school vibe if you if you get away from like sync and go more to time base. But you can also modulate the filter. So this is how it sounds like. Uh, let's put it maybe a little higher so we're not like in the meat of the sound muddying stuff up but let's put it more to the right So there's a lot of great plugins out there that you can use, obviously, besides the Ableton ones. But the idea of it at the end of the day is going to come down to, again, adding these automations to it. I think that's the idea I want to implant in your head, the seed that will grow into you becoming like a crazy master and putting effort into these little things to so just make your transitions and everything sound better. The last thing I'll add here, and this is something very popular done with a lot of sounds, is a change of, um, of dynamics in the sound design process of the sound. So from what I'm going to do in Ableton is I'm going to hit configure and I'm going to put envelope one to my decay and my release. I'm going to unconfigure from there. What I can do now is automate both of these guys at the end to create probably one of the more um, generic things you're going to hear. 
but it's done a lot and you're gonna see what I mean. So then you have this. And then it does this kind of swell, like, cause the release on this sound is just, a, the, the is being allowed to ring out. Maybe we don't want to get too crazy, but then we're going to come back down to where we were at. And that's going to help us in creating like this very neat transition, assuming that we're going to do this. And this is another great way to create impactful, interesting transitions rather than just getting rid of the damn kick. But we're going to do that there and we will get rid of the kick, but you're going to see the difference that it makes. Okay. So we're going to try that. Okay, from there, I'm going to add maybe an echo that's going to be normal to that. So we're going to get rid of this beautiful echo we've created. But we're just going to let it ring out more. That's pretty much what I want. So the transition sounds good and doesn't just fade away anywhere. And maybe add a little, yeah. Other than that, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video on adding additive interest, making your synths just a little more interesting, utilizing these techniques. There's a lot more to it because there's so much more you can do. You can add vibrato to your leads here and there and whatnot. But again, hopefully this plants the idea, the seed. Other than that, you guys take care. If you want to support the channel, evilsounds.com. And you guys have a great rest of your day.